Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite dude who's always correct about everything, Gardner. What can I say? I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty right about stuff. <laughs> so just last week, uh, I had to reinstall Manjaro on my desktop here. Uh, I'm a Manjaro user. I really like Manjaro. And uh, what's very interesting about this is even though Manjaro is based on Arch, uh, I've actually had fewer issues with updates, with, or like system upgrades, with kernel upgrades on Manjaro than I ever had on Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu, I'd have to, I felt like I had to reinstall Ubuntu once every th three to five months. Like Ubuntu felt like it was kind of, I don't know, like unstable or something. Like there was something wrong <laughs> where I would like go to update a package and then the whole system would just kind of screw up. Um, maybe it was PPAs, I don't know. But Manjaro feels way more stable than Ubuntu does. I've only had to do a fresh install of Manjaro once before, would, and that was because of a like a graphics driver problem that I just could not figure out. So I just figured, nuke and pave, right? Well, last week it happened again, and that's the first time in like a year that I've had to actually reinstall Manjaro. That's pretty awesome. I, I you know, as a Windows user, I had to do it every six months. As an Ubuntu user, it was every three to five months. The fact that Manjaro went a year without needing to be reinstalled, uh, that fills me with confidence. So uh, I thought it was actually kind of interesting because it had been a while since I reinstalled Manjaro. Uh, the, the, the process was just a little bit more streamlined, just a little bit easier. And uh, I, I thought it might be interesting to go over the things that I had to do to get Manjaro up to the point where I felt that it was usable for me and my workflow. So here are eight things that I do when I first reinstall Manjaro. All right, first up, we have the alt tab behavior. Now, admittedly, a lot of the things on this list are going to be about uh, Gnome, but the fact of the matter is when I first install Manjaro, Gnome is, comes with it, that's the version that I use. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, the first things I do with an, a fresh Gnome install too. <laughs> and if there is one default setting in Gnome that really pisses me off to no end, it's the alt tab behavior. And there are going to be people who are like, yeah, there's an extension to fix that, right? There is, you know, you're definitely well within your right to do that. I have somewhat of a, a, at least a slight aversion to extensions. Um, I rather would just go through the GNOME settings and thankfully you can do that. Just open the GNOME settings panel and go to the keyboard shortcuts tab, locate switch windows in the list. And when you click on it, just hit alt tab and then hit replace. Once you hit that replace button, it'll override the switch applications hotkey to the correct behavior, which is alt tabbing between windows. I can't figure out for the life of me why switch applications is the default uh, behavior for alt tab rather than switch windows. Uh, it is literally the sole blemish on an otherwise perfect GNOME desktop. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's like the one thing. And truthfully, the fix is simple and easy and yeah, it's fine. And I know that there are some people who are going to get butt hurt over the fact that I say good gnome. Uh, I have to do this in every video now, apparently, but it's pronounced gnome. The G in gnome stands for gnu. That's how you pronounce it. This is pronounced gnome. Uh, it's a little, it's a mythical creature. This is pronounced gnome. Gnome, gnome. I am capable of differentiating between the two. <laughs> Shots fired. Next up, uh, we have emoji typing. Uh, some people are gonna find this offensive too, but I think that emojis are awesome. I love emojis. Uh, I think they're cute and fun and I just dig them. Oh, they're so good. So I've, I went on like a, a little spelunking expedition on the World Wide Web to figure out uh, a clean, simple, and efficient way to type emojis on a standard keyboard. Actually found a solution too, it's pretty awesome. So to do it in Manjaro, just open up uh, add remove software and search for emoji picker. And this will add a new input method to your system. In GNOME settings panel, uh, go to language and then click the plus button, select other, and then search for other and then parentheses typing booster in the list. Once you've added it to your system, you're able to switch typing modes by hitting super space and then typing the name of the symbol you want in the text field. 
and it's not just for emojis either. The cool thing is you can type in all kinds of different symbols that aren't mapped to a standard American keyboard, like an M dash, for example, which is a character that I use all the time, but it's not mapped to my keyboard. Now, ideally, I'd like to have a keyboard that has like a, a, an LCD behind every key and I could just hit super space and then pick the key that I want. Uh, pick the emoji that I want, whatever, but that's not how, uh, that's not the keyboard that I have right now. And I don't know if uh, something exists like that and it's Linux compatible, so I don't know. But what I have right now, I feel like it works pretty well. Uh, you just uh, super, super space and you're back to normal typing. Super space again, you're in emoji typing. I think that's pretty awesome. All right, next up is configuring online accounts. So I have a Nextcloud server set up in my home and uh, I couldn't be more happy with it. What I find really awesome is the fact that you can actually add your Nextcloud account to your GNOME account manager and it will integrate Nextcloud's web dev right into the file manager, into Nautilus. That's super cool. Um, it's really awesome when I use my gigabit network to be able to access my uh, network attached storage super quick. I love that. And you know, there are some other options here too. Uh, if you use a Google, I'm sorry, a Google account. I almost threw up when I said that. You can add it here if you would like. That's not something I would do, but that's well within your right to do. <laughs> One of the things that I'm super stoked about is setting up a DLNA server on my home network. Uh, having, I have Plex and I believe that there's a DLNA client in Plex and I'm gonna try and set it up through GNOME accounts and see if I can't get like Lollipop or Rhythmbox or something like that to be able to play my Plex Media through a native desktop app. I'm super stoked about that idea. Uh, I haven't been able to get it set up right now, but that's something that we're gonna try for a future video. If you wanna see that, let me know down in the comments. Especially because uh, I've been kind of fed up with uh, the, the web version of Plex. Uh, the web player in Plex will crash when it tries to play certain FLAC files. I'm not sure why, but some of the files that I have ripped from my own uh, CD collection have some kind of problem. And Plex, the web version, just can't handle it. So instead of that, I'm gonna try the desktop version. Hopefully, if you'd like to see a video about setting up DLNA on a network, getting it working with Rhythmbox or something like that. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys think about that idea. Okay, next up, get in the habit of updating your system. The nice thing about Manjaro is that the repositories are just up to date. They are bleeding edge. They are the most up to date packages of any usable Linux distro that I've ever used. And I said usable, that's right. <laughs> While that is awesome, it's also kind of a double-edged sword. If you're not on top of your updates, you can end up with 30, 40, 50 packages that need to be updated uh, pretty quickly, actually. And while most of the time, 30 or 40 packages will install an upgrade really quick, you know, if you have 90 packages and one of them is a kernel, <laughs> that could take like a little while. That's why one of the first things that I do when I install Manjaro is upgrade. Manjaro actually comes with an extension in GNOME called Pemac, Pemac? Pamac update indicator, <laughs> Pamac. I don't know why I have problems saying Pamac, but I do. Probably because it's not a word. And uh, it tells you how many packages need to be upgraded. Uh, I only have one because I upgraded yesterday. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you don't get in the habit, you can sometimes fall pretty far behind. And then when you go to install a single piece of software, you got to do a whole system upgrade and it can take a while. It's kind of obnoxious. But what if you can't find the package you're looking for in the default repositories? Enable AUR. Hi, Mom. Hi, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I was about, I was gonna call you. So we're having a good Mother's Day, so I was thinking about my kids. So I thought I'd say, happy Easter to the bunch. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm recording a video. Say hi to everybody. Oh, hi everybody. Well, that's my mom. <laughs> and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. All like two of you who are watching right now. <laughs> all right, so next up, I don't even remember where I was, holy cow. Next up, uh, enable the AUR. Bleeding Edge packages are great and all, but like 
I got really confused when I first hopped over to Manjaro. Um, what happens if the package that I'm looking for isn't in Manjaro's repos? That's where the AUR comes in. The AUR is the Arch User Repository, and it's just a collection of community-made scripts uh, that allow you to install applications that just aren't available in the default repositories. To enable the AUR, open Add Remove Software and go to Preferences, find the AUR tab at the top, and then Enable AUR. Once it's enabled, you can go ahead and let it update, and then uh, when you search for a package, it will be labeled as coming from the AUR. Now, I have found a few instances where packages from the AUR are just kind of less stable, I guess, than like the system packages. A great example is Caden Live. Caden Live through the AUR was buggy and, and super crashy. And the version from the native repos was way more stable and way more just better to use. So the problem is if you go to download an app that's distributed as like a dev package from the app maintainer's website, like library, for example, lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer, then uh, <laughs> you're actually gonna be in for a little bit of a surprise. You can't install dev packages on uh, Manjaro, at least not very easily. So instead, you can head over to the AUR and download the app from there. Your mileage may vary, but I found that it works pretty well with library. Um, I also have used the app image. The app image is pretty good for library as well. All right, next up, extensions. Manjaro comes with a few extensions that are enabled by default that I find rather <laughs> annoying, to be honest. The biggest one that I immediately disable is dash to dock. Uh, dash to dock is just not how I like my GNOME. I prefer a more or less stock GNOME install. Now, I honestly don't remember the entire list of extensions that were enabled when I first installed Manjaro. The biggest one was dash to dock, but I do actually go in and enable a few extensions, I, a few that I just find personally useful. Uh, open weather, GS connect, sound input and output device chooser. Uh, and I have been playing around with night shell. I don't know if I like it, um, but switching between light and dark mode uh, when the sun's down, I think that that's actually kind of cool. We'll, we'll see if I keep that enabled though. <laughs> the next thing I wanna talk about is device drivers. This is something that a lot of distributions do, but Manjaro, I feel like, does it very well. If you have a GPU or another device that needs a driver like, that's like proprietary, for example, you can just head into the Manjaro settings manager, which is separate from the, uh, the GNOME settings panel. From there, double click on hardware configuration and then locate the device in the list that you wanna install the driver for, and then just check the install box on the option you want to install. What's nice about this is that it shows you which drivers are FOSS and which ones are proprietary with this column right here. It's super handy and really easy to use. I really like it. You can also use a terminal application to do it, which uh, works just as well. And the last thing I do is revert to Adweta or Adweta, Adweta. But if you prefer inferior experiences, you can just enable whatever one you want. Find tweaks in the activities panel and then navigate to the appearance tab. Uh, reset all of the options here to the good one or your preferred option. Now, I know that KDE is technically the default desktop for Manjaro, but this is a direct uh, download right from Manjaro's website. This is something that they do. So this is the version of Manjaro that I use because I like GNOME. Adweta is the best uh, desktop style of any desktop, proprietary or free. And uh, yeah, that's not empty hyperbole. Like, I honestly think that that's the case. It's better than Windows 10, it's better than Mac OS, and it's better than all the other desktop environments on Linux. Fact. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I had a lot of fun writing this up, uh, doing this video. I, I wanna know what you guys think about it. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Manjaro? Have you played around with it? What are your thoughts? I know that there are some people who love Manjaro, and there are a lot of other people who don't quite love it so much. I wanna thank all 105 patrons, including Jim T, one of my top tier Singularity members for uh, their continued support on the channel here. It's because of you guys on Patreon that I'm able to do what I do here. So uh, if you're not a patron and you believe in what I do, consider supporting the show over on Patreon. It makes a huge difference. I also have some new merch that's coming out. Uh, this is a new shirt that I'm working on. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Gnu slash Linux. Nobody puts Linux in a box. 
I don't know. I like that shirt. I think it's awesome. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you like what I do here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're on library, share this video, hit that repost button. Have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.